I am a bit partial to a hippie earring. I love dangly earrings, so I'm going to show you how I make these. They're just um, sort of very, well, slightly dramatic earrings. You can make them as long or as short as you want, and you can put any colour beads or any coloured wire, so they can be any um, sort of variation, but I like them quite uh, neutral, so I've made these in silver. Those are very sort of dramatic. Um, and these, just to show you a complete variation using different coloured wires to become more summery and beachy and sort of more bohemian. Um, so the ones we're going to make are with black beads, silver and black, which um, I want to make them for myself really so I can wear them. <laughs> um, so I hope you'll follow along and enjoy the process. I'm going to make one to show you. I'm using this 0.5 um, a coloured wire, black wire, and I've got a coil and gizmo because I'm going to make some coils. This is how you make the colour on the sides of the earring. So just if you've used a coil and gizmo you'll know you have to attach the wire to the top of the handle and then place it into the bracket. You might have one that actually hooks onto a table. Um, 0 0.5 wire I'm using, just you want fine wire, it could be 0.4, it doesn't matter which. Um, and then just turn the handle and away you go. So it's just a case of creating a nice, long, even coil. And I'm using the thinnest of the handles because I want it just to sort of sit on a 0 0.8 wire. So it'll just be like a sleeve. So again, as you can see, you can just make these lengths in different coloured wires uh, to create these different coloured earrings. I'm going to spin, let me think, about two inches, um, which I will cut into um, one inch pieces. So the two inch coil I'll cut in half and that will create, if I cut it in half, it'll create the two sides of the earring. So obviously if you're making a pair, you'll need to do this twice. Um, but as I've made the, the one earlier, I just have to do it once. So cut off the, the messy ends and then find the centre of your coil and cut through to roughly to get about, I think they're about an inch in length. If one is slightly longer than the other, just trim it. So you cut into it, don't cut off it, just cut into the coil like jump rings um, so that you don't squash the coil. Right, I have two one inch lengths of black coiled wire. So that's what I need. And I need a central piece for my earring, the central dangle. So here's some 0 0.8 millimeter, 20 gauge wire. I'm going to feed that coil onto the 0 0.8 and create a central link. I'm using my little step pliers because that gives me uniformity in all the links that I'm going to make but equally you can use um, around those pliers. So create a centralized link at one end and then feed your coil right up to the end. You want the, the wire inside to be nice and straight. Cut it off leaving enough to make a link at the other end. So I'm going to just uh, use my uh, snipe nose pliers or chain nose pliers just to bend that to a right angle so that I can create again another centralized link at the other end. So it's got two links at the end of these coils. Now make sure that these links are going to sit um, completely on the same plane as well. So you hold one with one plier and hold the other and just twist them to make sure they're, they're sitting um, at the same angle or, or on the same plane. So you want to do that again. That's for the other side of the earring. So again, just slide it through, create a link. Um, as I say, you can use your round nose pliers for this. And then just make sure it's completely closed and flattened and then bring your um, your coil right up to that link 
and do the same on the other side. So there's nothing complicated about these earrings. It's it's mainly a case of you know doing all these little procedures, making all the components, and then you put them all together right at the end. So if you were doing if you were really making these earrings as a set, I would make all the components first, and then you just put them together right at the end. So now we're going to do, those are the two sides, now we're going to do that, uh, that uh, central um, band of circles. And I'm going to use my step pliers again, the, the smallest end, but equally use your round nose pliers for this if you don't have step pliers. So I'm going to the end of the wire and I'm creating a small curl. So there's one curl and then placing my pliers next to that curl and bringing it completely round again to create a second circle right next to it. And I'm going to continue doing this to create um, seven circles in a row to try and keep the circles on a straight line. This will help keep them even. Um, I've, I've got to try and keep my hands within the <laughs> the shot, the camera shot, because I'm I'm trying to look at it through the camera lens. So there we have. Um, we need seven. You can either do five for a smaller earring, or seven for a larger. I, I'm doing seven on this particular one. And also, you can make these circles bigger. You don't have to use. I'm using the small circles, but so then cut cut it off from the spool and you have a row of seven even circles. Now I don't want that to be completely in a straight line, so I'm just going to place it on a round mandrel, anything will do, just to curve um, the piece. You want to curve that unit, give it a little bit of a curve, and that, that creates that nice sort of rounded end to the earring, that sort of swing part of the earring. And then just get your um, planishing hammer, or whammer hammer, uh, the steel end, and just gently, very, very gently tap it. And that will work harden it and fix it. Uh, don't hammer it hard because you don't want to weaken it. And just make sure that those ends are completely closed and there's no opening at either end and that it's flat and your unit is secure. So there's, there's uh, how you make your those end pieces. Um, and now we want to make the central um, uh, bead that goes down the center of the earring. So I'm just getting a piece of 0 0.8 wire, threading my beads, my chosen beads. You can, you can do two or three and have them link onto each other. I've got two together on one piece of wire. And I'm just going to make a head pin. So I'm making a little hook squeezing that doubled wire so that it's completely doubled up together and creating a little head pin so that the bead cannot slide off. It's a little bit long so I'm just going to snip off and clean up the end so it's a little bit shorter um, and then just neaten that up. So there's the head pin but equally you could use a ready-made head pin for this if you've got one to hand. Slide your beads onto that length of wire and cut it off the spool, just leaving enough to make the link at the very end. So I'm just going to create another link at the top, which can be suspended from the center of my earring. So that's going to go right in the middle. So we're nearly there to connect everything together. Um, I think, uh, yeah, what we need to do now is make the link. So I'm making large jump rings that are going to link, you see all the beads, the swing beads hanging off the little um, concave curl. I'm just going to make some big jump rings now on my bale making pliers. But if you have a pencil, this will be equally good for creating a coil. So my bale maker pliers create this uh, sort of larger link with the 0.8 mil wire. 
I'm going to cut through just like jump rings. So these are just basic jump rings. And I've done a tutorial on jump rings, so if you're a bit confused about making recoils, um, just refer to my jump ring tutorial that you cut through the coil one by one, getting the complete circles. So those jump rings now can be fed with a seed bead. And that saves you from feeding, you know, making links on beads. This is a quick, quick earring, really. So first of all, I'm going to link the framework together. I'm going to open that link and connect it to my circles at the base of the earring and put both sides on. So that's the sides of the earring. And make sure that's um, closed and nothing can come apart. So those are the two sides. And then go to the top. We want to get one of the large jump rings. In fact, I'm going to add just one small extra jump ring to the top of my center piece because I think it just needs to hang a little bit lower. And of course, you can you, you could add a bead, another bead, but I'm looking at the length of my center piece and I'm looking at the, so I'm just going to add one more link so that it, it hangs a little bit lower. But, you know, while you're making these, you're going to be experimenting. Each one's going to be different because your beads are going to be different to mine. And don't forget, although I'm showing you a pair of earrings, this also um, is a wonderful technique for a, um, a pendant. So I'm opening up my big jump ring and I'm going to feed it through the top links from the coils on the side. Then I'm going to feed my center drop piece and then back through the other side of the earring. And that creates the triangle with the center swing pendant. And close that up. And that will obviously eventually go on the uh, ear wire that you want to use. So there's the there's piece. And now all I have to do is uh, suspend these little swing beads. And I'm using a jump ring. And I'm going to feed the bead onto the jump ring so that they just sit with gravity at the center. And they have this lovely movement. I mean, that, that's what I do like about these earrings, is, is the movement they produce when you wear them. There's so much, uh, that's why I call them swing, because there's so much sort of movement when you move with all these little components. So each one of these um, circular jump rings will be used to feed on the seed bead or the bead you have, and then you link it into that row of circles at the base of your earring. Now if you have little beads that don't feed on to um, wire, of course you can thread beads or I have uh, shown you earrings I've made that I've made just spirals out of wire and suspended them from. Anything can be suspended from these circles at the end of your um, earring. So I'm going to leave that completely up to you. It just gives you that lovely sort of jangly end. Um, so go through all the beads, feeding them onto these jump rings. And we're nearly there now. So you can see it's quite an instant design in the sense that nothing is too laborious. It's just repetition, a lot of repetition. And just do it all in stages. And maybe have some music on and you know it's it's very relaxing and therapeutic to create things especially with repetition because you don't have to think too hard once you know you're doing the same process again and again so there we have that lovely movement at the end of the the earring and again as i said you could make that into a pendant um, or, or a handbag charm or anything you want and then all we have to do is connect it to an ear wire. And I like to customize my ear wires. Here's a ready-made uh, ear wire that uh, you can, you know, purchase 
from a bead store, I'm just going to very carefully open up the link at the bottom. Uh, you've got to do this carefully because you can weaken the wire there. And then straighten it out and then you can take off the beads that are already on the existing ready-made one and thread on your own chosen bead to match the um, colour of your your earring. Equally you can make your own ear wires out of stone and silver wire. This is uh, just a, a quick way to show you how you can customise something ready-made. And then link that in and connect it to the top making sure it's closed and there's no gaps and there you have a finished earring and that will go with the other one. So I hope you enjoy this project and you make it your own. Thank you for watching.